Environmental activism is more important now than ever before. Today, we've traveled to Sequatmo land just outside of Kamloops in British Columbia to tell the story of some little houses that will be standing in the way of a big pipeline. Hi Kanahus. Hi. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you too. It's a hive of activity here, isn't it? Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about what's going on? Why are you here right now? We're here building the first tiny house of 10. We're planning on building 10 tiny houses to be placed right in the direct path of the Trans Mountain Kinder Morgan Pipeline. Proposing to go through our indigenous traditional territories and homelands. 518 kilometers of this pipeline proposes to cross our lands. So. In order to stop it, we are going to live in tiny houses on the pipeline route. This pipeline is proposing to bring tar sands bitumen from the Alberta tar sands all the way to the Salish Sea, all the way to Vancouver, and pump it to the global markets. And they need to go through our lands in order for it to get to Vancouver. But what we're saying is that this fossil fuel industry is just going to increase all of the impacts of climate change that we're facing today. And we can't have the Alberta tar sands increase and we can't have this pipeline going through. And it's really to protect our water and our land and our traditional foods and our children's future. So this pipeline project, it's predominantly an environmental concern for you, right? It's an indigenous, a Sukhwatmo concern. As Sukhwatmo people, we have been here for tens of thousands of years. We say since the beginning of time, our people have mammoth tusks that are, are carved you know, by our people. So we've been here occupying and using this land for thousands and thousands of years. And so we are the environment. Like when we talk about being environmentalists, we are the environment because we've had such a close relationship with our land that we are a part of the land. And what we say is that the blood and bones of our ancestors make up the land and this earth upon which we walk. And that's why we have to walk with such great respect. And that's why we need to defend our land from anything that's trying to really destroy it. The Imperial Metals Mount Pauly mine disaster was a catastrophic mine disaster that happened three years ago that spilled hundreds of millions of toxic mine wastes, tailings and heavy metals and processing chemicals into Hazeltine Creek that led into Quinal Lake, which is the deepest glacier-fed lake in the world. And it crushed our nation. It was in, happened in the heart of our nation and all of our water is impacted all the way to the Fraser. So we've seen firsthand environmental disasters happen in our territory and we're not about to risk this happening again. So for people out there who think it's just a pipeline running through the land, what are the major things that you're worried about? What does this pipeline put at risk? Our whole world. Um, the Alberta tar sands is one of the world's largest carbon bombs. And by pushing through with a pipeline that's going to only increase the size of the Alberta tar sands, it's going to drastically impact all of us around the world. We see what's happening with our climate already and extremes that we're seeing with the climate already. It's just going to make everything worse. So why did you choose tiny houses to make this stand? I was down at Standing Rock at the resistance against the Dakota Access Pipeline and we saw the tiny houses going up in two or three days. And so because of our time restraint with this construction of this pipeline coming through, we wanted these tiny houses, but also because our community really believes in alternative building and it's something that our community has been discussing for a long time. Our goal with these 10 tiny houses is to be put strategically in the path of the pipeline, but this is also creating an awakening within our nation for sustainable living. You know, so our imprint on this land um, doesn't increase, but we really minimize our impact on, on the lands, and that includes going small with our homes and our consumption. Also, we want to be able to really have some of these tiny houses for cultural revival and language revival. Language is really important. Our, we're not only losing our land, but we're also losing our language, and our language is based on the land and being out there on the land. 
So language is a really key point, but also reviving our traditional birth keeping practices and our traditional indigenous tattooing practices that we want to utilize these tiny houses to bring back and revive some of our, our culture that has been lost or threatened as well. So why tiny houses on wheels though? We chose to have the tiny houses on wheels for it to be mobile, so we could be moving it around to different areas that are under attack and other threat by this construction of this pipeline, because it is a thousand kilometer pipeline and over half of that is within our territory, so it's a big geographical area. And because being as a native person that has been in the land resistance fight for many, many years, we've seen our houses being destroyed and bulldozed down. We've seen the province come in with um, injunctions and trespass notices to say that we are illegally on our own territory. But this is the way we challenge them as we go out there and we continue to still do this. There has never been any formal agreement of us giving up our land to anybody. So really the provincial government is just assuming that they have authority and control, even though legally they have no legal binding. And that's why we are saying we don't give our consent for the pipeline to go through and we're standing on the power that we have the collective right as Indigenous people to say no to these projects. These tiny houses are standing on with very big, powerful forests right now in our nation. And it's already created a lot of tension with uh, politicians and, and the leaders here in BC and Canada, but it's going to even create more once we actually physically get these tiny houses moved right on the path of the pipeline. And this is the very first one to be built right here, isn't it? Yes. Can we have a look at what you're doing? So like I said, we put it on the trailer. So it's on 18 foot trailer. It was built out, so it's a little bit bigger than the, the actual trailer. And it's rodent proof. So they put that metal in there. So that's one of the good things. It's rodent proof. It was one of the women at Standing Rock that went to build some of the tiny houses there that had the original concept plan for the tiny house but because we brought volunteer builders from like all around that this is their first time meeting each other and like they didn't build a tiny house but they've been carpenters for 30 plus years and things like that so they have a lot of knowledge and came together and put this together for us and we're so happy we're going to be putting some more plywood on top of this and painting it so this, this whole house is going to be a mural the murals will be stories of our people so we wanted to have a big salmon uh, a salmon, because the salmon, like I said, is the keystone species. Anything that happens to the salmon is going to impact us all. So what's going on on the build here today? They're putting the door in right now. So the door is finally getting put in, and, and this is like our house. And so once the home's completed, what will actually be going inside here? We want to make this living space something really comfortable for people that are going to be out there, because they're going to be more in an isolated situation too, because it's going to be out on the territory. So we want to have a like, comfortable living space and we're going to be putting the composting toilet and the, all of that on the outside because the whole project is called Tiny House Warriors, Our Land is Home. So we want to also, we're having minimal amount of living and sleeping space, but our land is our home. So we want to beautify and make our, the outside living space just as well as we do our inside living space. We want to put some bunk beds in here. We're going to have solar installation in here. People from the impacted tar sands communities have said they're going to uh, sponsor the first solar installation on the first tiny house. So that's something that we are really looking forward to. We're probably going to install it right there on the pipeline route and put a tiny, our little wood stove in there. And so that would be our cooking space as well for in the winter. People are already calling this the next standing rock. What do you say to that? Like there's hundreds of thousands or maybe even a million of people that have been aware of what happened at standing rock. And I believe that, yes, this can be the next big standing rock. And a lot of people that want to come and help, we want to ask them to come and help build these. You know, people that want to come and stand on the front lines. This is our front line fight now, is building tiny houses and, and being able to not just resist against something, but also to create something really beautiful, to create hope and to create homes for people because we have such a big housing crisis as Indigenous people in our communities. People don't have homes, so this is going to be able to help create some hope for our people. And all too often, we're always there blocking, 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 but we want to be a solution. We want to be a, a climate leaders. We want to have solutions to the climate issue, and we feel that this is one of them. And by minimizing our imprint on the earth, and being able to live closer to the earth is a way that we can do it. So for people out there watching this right now who want to help, how can they help? What can they do? How do they get in touch with you? We have our Tiny House Warriors Facebook page, and that's how everybody could get in contact with us right now. 
Um, we are going to be putting another call out for builders to come for this whole duration of these nine other tiny houses that we're going to be building and for the mural and for the artists that want to come and help produce beautiful art to be put all around this tiny house. And so Tiny House Warriors Facebook page, reach out to us, message us on that. Um, we are looking for donations and volunteer support right now. With this tiny house, I feel you're going to be making a really big statement. I personally feel really proud and I'm very inspired to be here right at the very beginning. Thank you so much for sharing all Thank this with you. me and the best of luck. Thank you. This land is beautiful, it's abundant and it's precious. Protecting our environment should be something that's at the very forefront of all of our minds, our hearts, and our actions in this world. To that end, I am so incredibly inspired by what I'm seeing here today, and I feel very privileged to witness the very start of this movement.